Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. There is a man who was alleged to have committed a crime. He said he was innocent. He claimed he was innocent all along. And indeed, he could have been let out of prison years ago if only he'd admitted he was guilty. But he refused to admit it, and he ended up doing 17 years. So only subsequently a DNA test proved that he didn't do it. He was innocent and that the state had taken 17 years of his life, which he'll never get back, and locked him up in prison. So he's entitled to compensation, which, because of the law, is limited to £1 million. But that's not what he'll be receiving. He won't be receiving £1 million because the state will then take off 25%, £250,000, for bed and boarding. They are charging him £250,000 because they locked him up wrongly. How is this right? How is this ethically right? And it isn't as though it's the money. We've given tens of billions to the Ukraine. Money that's unaccountable and probably gone straight into President Zelensky's own bank account. You have to wonder why a comedian who was on very little money before entering politics has somehow ended up a billionaire. And yet here we are in this position, this poor guy, 17 years of his life stolen, and they want to charge him for the privilege. We'll take a look at this article, but it is mind boggling. Here goes. So um, a man falsely imprisoned for 17 years could be forced to pay thousands to the prison service. Andrew Malkinson, 57, was found guilty of uh, arring a woman in Salford in 2003. And he was jailed for life with a minimum term of seven years. And that's a, that, that is seven years until he's liable for parole. And if they think he's good, you know, at the end of seven years, and they, he can be paroled. That's fine. However, however, one of the parts of parole is that you have to admit to the crime. You have to say sorry. But he wasn't refusing. He was refusing to apologize, of course, because he had nothing to apologize for. So the man who spent 17 years in jail for a crime he did not commit, may have to pay thousands to the prison service. Andrew Malkinson, 57, was found guilty of hiring a woman in Salford in 2003 and was jailed for life with a minimum term of seven years. Andrew could have been released after serving these seven years if, if he'd admitted to the crime. But due to his claims of innocence, he was forced to serve a further 10 years. His sentence was quashed yesterday by the Court of Appeal after DNA evidence linked the crime to another man. And so there he is. He's claiming he's been innocent for seven years and it turns out he's innocent for seven years. And all because a jury was convinced by a prosecutor. There was obviously no real proof because there could not possibly have been any proof since he didn't do it. The proof did not exist. What he was convicted on was not proof. Therefore, he should never have been convicted. You have to wonder how many others are languishing in jail, claims of innocence, and yet definitely are innocent. Um, despite the miscarriage of justice, however, he has revealed that he may have to pay the cost of food and accommodation whilst he was behind bars from any compensation that he is handed. According to the Mirror, this practice has been standard since the Criminal Appeal Act 1995 came into force. You shouldn't have to pay your own bed and board when the state has effectively kidnapped you from life. It's the state that's put him in prison. He didn't elect to do this. There's no way an innocent man should have to pay this. Uh, in an interview with BBC Radio 4, he said, somehow the prison service has lobbied the government in the early 2000s. The result is even if you fight tooth and nail and gain compensation, you then have to pay the prison service a large chunk of that for so-called board and lodgings, which is so abhorrent to me. I am sickened by it. Rules that board and lodgings has to be paid were introduced by judges after two boys were wrongly sentenced for the murder of paperboy Carl Bridgewater in 1978. Cousins Vincent and Michael Hickey were freed by the Court of Appeal after their convictions were found to be flawed in 1997 and compensation was paid to them. Uh, the first Mr Hickey received 1.02 million and second Mr Hickey was awarded 550,000. 
but 25% of this was seized to cover their living expenses while in prison. The maximum payout available to someone who's been jailed for more than 10 years is £1 million. It is absolutely disgusting. Why are you charging? Why You're basically punishing a man for being innocent. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Andrew has also slammed the apology, apology he received from the police who handled the original investigation as meaningless. Assistant Chief Constable Sarah Jackson said, We are truly sorry for Mr Malkinson that he is the victim of such a grave miscarriage of justice in being convicted of a crime he did not commit and of serving a 17-year custodial sentence. Is the police officer investigating the original crime being fired? Is he having his pension withdrawn? No. Is it just a set of meaningless words? Yes. Will anyone suffer? No. What's the point of the apology? Um, I hope the cop actor, I hope this guy actually sues that police officer who was the investigating officer. That's the only way. Failure to do his job properly. Failure to look at other uh, potential um, perpetrators. This is what happens. Um, policeman investigating a crime, detective investigating a crime. They think, oh, well, he might be doing it. And so they concentrate on one person and they exclude everyone else. They've caught their little fish. Uh, and so they don't go looking too far beyond. Uh, and if there isn't the evidence there, they sometimes manufacture it or outright lie. It's been known. Uh, anyway, she said, while we hope this outcome will give, uh, give him a long overdue sense of justice, it won't. We acknowledge that it does not return the years he has lost. It won't either. It says, I have offered to meet with him personally to deliver this apology. That would be meaningless. Why would he want to do that? It's the bastards like the police that have put him in prison in the first place. I, I, on here, I say a lot. The police are not your friends. Andrew told the BBC's Newsnight programme, the Greater Manchester Police apology, it's meaningless to me. Absolutely meaningless. An apology without accountability. What is that? It's nothing. It's nothing, he says. And it means nothing. No, they need to go to the original detect, uh, detective in charge of the investigation. If he's still working, fire him. And if he is, collect his pension, end his police pension. Get him to pay for the the bed and lodgings. That's the best way. If he has to sell his house, so be it. Get the police officer who investigate to sell his house. Uh, he also criticised the Criminal Cases Review Commission, which is supposed to investigate miscarriages of justice in England, stating that they had turned him down twice before being handed the evidence on a platter. He told BBC Radio 4's program, uh, Today programme that it felt as though he had been kidnapped by the state. Uh, I said that earlier. Um, it's been, it's taken an extremely heavy toll on my person, my psyche, my psychology, my being, my soul, he said. I cannot articulate how I even managed to get through it. I was in total shock at first, uh, at first, even for a few years. He said I even contemplated ending myself many times. Andrew told reporters outside the Royal Courts of Justice, since I was arrested in 2003, the police, the prison system and the probation service have been calling me a liar because I denied that I committed the crime. They claimed I was in denial and they made me serve an extra 10 more years in prison because I would not make a false confession. I am not a liar. I am not in denial. But I'll tell you who is. Greater Manchester Police are liars and they are in denial. He went on to say, even after this judgment today, I predict we will see them denying responsibility for what happened. We will see them stretching credulity with their excuse making. Greater Manchester Police have been scrambling to cover up how they wrongly convicted me for 20 years. Addressing the victim of the crime, he said, I'm so sorry you were attacked and brutalised that night by that man. I am not the person who attacked you, but what happened to me is not your fault. Trisha Hose, Andrew's mum, who's now in her 70s, expressed her relief. She could at least tell the people her son was not a monster. She said, now Andy's name has been cleared. Suddenly in the public eye, I am no longer, longer a deluded mother. My son is no longer a monster. The point is, your son was never a monster. He was the victim of an outrageous, uh, probably deliberate policy by GM, uh, Great Manchester Police, GMP, 
who assumed that they've found their man. They wanted a quick result. Bang, get him in. It don't really matter if he's innocent. We haven't got the evidence, Sarge. Don't worry, son. I'll make some up. Undoubtedly, that's happened. Because, obviously, there was no evidence. There couldn't have been because he didn't do it. So any evidence pushed in that trial had to be created. And there he is, poor fella, doing 17 years because the GMP couldn't be asked to do their job. Need to find out who did these, who made these decisions, and prosecute them. Take from them 17 years of, the, of their life to give up for his 17 years. Anyway, I shall finish there and come up. Now, it is undoubtedly Greater Manchester Police fabricating evidence um, and not doing their job. I mean, in the court case itself, the evidence was presented by the prosecution, said that uh, they showed pictures of the, the woman's nails, which were broken, she said, as she was scratching the face of her attacker. And yet, the, uh, the face um, in the mugshot uh, of Andrew was taken the day after he was, or taken the day he was arrested, which was the day after the attack, the alleged attack. Well, the attack was real, but it was alleged it was him. But it showed no facial injury, which is very odd. And then the uh, the police produced two witnesses to this. One was uh, a heroin addict, and the other one uh, had had several convictions for dishonesty um, and perjury. Unbelievable, isn't it? That was their that was their case. I scratched his face. Picture of man with no scratch on face. And then the two witnesses were, shall we just say, unreliable at best. And that was what got that man put in set jail for 17 years. Why the jury bought it, we can only surmise that the, the evidence was presented in such a way that it was a fabrication from start to start to finish. But it was presented in such a way that it would have seemed convincing. So the Crown, Crown Prosecution Service went along with this as well. It's the CPS. Nobody at the CPS questioned the viability of these witnesses or even looked at the images uh, of the broken fingernails and the fact there was no facial injury on the on the victim on, on well on what is now the victim on on Andrew I mean and it's it shows that the police are obviously making up stuff because they want their conviction rate increased they want to look good uh, and the Crown Prosecution Service is employing people incapable of filtering evidence anyway he's out and I hope he takes him to the court he'll get his million uh, and I hope he overturns the decision to charge him and he needs to do if they, whatever, he t whatever he gets charged out of his compensation for his bed and lodgings, he needs to do a private prosecution against a detective in charge of investigating him and get his money back that way. And if that guy has to sell his house, so be it. I have no sympathy. The police are all bastards, and I've said it time and time again. Anyway, I shall stop there. I shall finish off. Thank you very much for watching. If you like what you're seeing here on the channel, do please hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, leave a like, leave a comment, please share the video. And until next time, stay safe, stay well, and remember, the police are not your friend. They're all lying, two-faced bastards. Bye.